On August 4th, 2022, 120 people, including farmers, food and beverage manufacturers, and representatives from civil societies, gathered at Rowett, Saskatchewan for Avena Foods Customer and Farmer Appreciation Day. Here's a taste of what we got up to. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Customer and Farmer Appreciation Day. So top dressing is basically an addition of nitrogen in season. If we start to see that we're having a higher than normal yield, what can happen is if we have more moisture than um, nitrogen in the soil, we can cause a protein deficit in the crop. So we add extra in season to help with yield and help with the protein to ensure that we're still getting a good quality grain. Um, but it's hard to make that decision in season because you have to do it quite early, which is where these soil probes really help us out and the environmental data to make that decision early on. Uh, one of the things we found early on in the pandemic is that for us to just go to wholesalers and sort of end distributors was not working to make sure we had a sustainable line of food. So we came up with sort of a concept around going right to producers and sort of seeing if we can, we can make some of our staples white labeled and working through and this program is an incredible enabler of us being able to make sure that when people come to us for support uh, we're able to say yes and and in addition to that what you know is is you're making sure that the that the folks that, that turn to food banks across southern saskatchewan and manitoba um, are able to have really good wholesome nutritious product uh, in their hamper and, and and make sure we're making sure we're keeping our community fed Often sustainability is being driven by ultimately the consumer, then the retailer that wants to provide the documentation that the consumer is seeking. They want their food to be grown more sustainably. They want to get more information on the sustainability of their food and they want to pay for more sustainable production um, when surveyed. So because of that, um, there's often that drive from the consumer side to document sustainability and that's where this initially came from. So the metrics that we developed are energy use, land use efficiency, greenhouse gas emissions and soil conservation. Those are the four things that we currently model for field production right across Western Canada and Ontario. We haven't done the Atlantic provinces and I'll show you what those crops are that we're modeling. It's most of what you're growing here. So spring wheat, canola, oats, peas, lentils, flax, barley, durum. So what a grower gets back is a report of about four pages per field where we break down what the estimated greenhouse gas emissions are from that field in that year for that crop and compare it to others in the same province. Hey everybody, my name is Gordon Bailey. Here we are in Robit, Saskatchewan at Avena and we made a fantastic lunch for everybody. What we did is we've been working with Avena on their uh, specially milled pulse flours and we got this like hybrid patty that's got 50% uh, ground beef, 50% of the pulse flours and then we had the 100% vegan one which was made with all the specially milled pulse flours. Clean label, delicious. We also had a pulse salad for everybody to enjoy. So far the reviews have been smashing. So I was approached to help out with this project. I haven't actually been here before today. What, what we're trying to do here is not present a, um, you know, a solution or a, we're sure this is gonna work for all of you here. This is just a first step of trying to see what kind of things can we try that where we're seeding additional things with the oats uh, at seeding time. So some of the cover crop approaches that are used more in the U.S. Uh, involve seeding crops after harvest or maybe partway through the season. Because we've got a very short season here, uh, one of the approaches that we've tried is intercropping. So we've kind of taken their, what they're doing and went, hold my beer, we're going to do this. And it's, and it's not a new, really, it's sort of new, but it's not. Because people were doing peola, pea canola a long time ago, or pea mustard. It's, it's what I think of as an old farmer hack. Um, because all it is is mixing different kinds of seeds together in a planned, coordinated, 
coordinated and intentionally. I'm sure a lot of you have had unintentional intercrops where you've got, you know, a crop that you grew last year showing up in your, this year's crop. And most of the time that doesn't go well. That wasn't planned, it wasn't intentional. Once in a while it does go well. That's sometimes how people start doing these is they say my unintentional intercrop worked out so I'm going to do that in a more planned, intentional way. So what we've done out here as just a first try uh, of doing this is there's some large green lentils with oats. Uh, they were planted at the same time. Uh, this is a cover crop mixture with some interesting things that I've been trying, I think I've ad mostly identified them. Um, in the middle is our straight oats. And then we've got oats and peas there in a mix. And then the French green lentils with oats. In here, I don't know if I'm supposed to be pulling things out, but there's some nice purple flowers in here. I'll take some out. So that's a vetch, that's a nitrogen fixer. So it will be doing some amount of nitrogen fixing in here. Um, of course, lentils are a nitrogen fixer. They will be, they, they look very healthy and they should be growing nitrogen. So they're going to be producing nitrogen. And there's some reason to think there's some transfer from the legumes to the oats based on some research that we've done, that's been done by other people and it, some including us. Jeff Shano had a project done lately where they were showing some transfer. How exactly it happens, that's not clear yet. But you know, leaky nodules, whatever. There's some synergies that are going on with with some of these intercrops so that could be that or it could be something like this let me ask one more question then um who here thinks they would crash on their first attempt okay you get to be first we'll make it an interactive event we are going to show you scouting mapping and applying so the whole purpose here is supposed to be agricultural so what i've done on in the app is just outline the area that i wanted to map I tell it some parameters like which camera is on there, what kind of resolution do I want. But our primary intent in Landview is to equip farmers to do this themselves or agronomy companies to do this themselves. So in terms of sustainability, you can see what we've done to date. You know, we worked with Field to Market Canada with our growers, that project continues. Step two was actually um, doing intercrop plots, which you saw, thank you to Lana Shaw. So what, are, what, what other things are we thinking now? So we wanted to tell you about some of the next developments. Is anybody familiar with TerraPass? It's where you can go online and you can actually um, buy carbon credits. So one of the challenges I've had as VP of Sales and Marketing is we should not be flying as much. COVID was great, right? Because you think, well, no guilt here, we're not flying that much. Um, but I did mention to some customers that perhaps we should reduce the face-to-face -face meetings and it went down like a lead balloon, right? Because <laughs> after all, relationships really matter. So one of the things we decided as a leadership team that from now on we'll actually be purchasing carbon credits through TerraPass. It's not perfect, but we'll get some trees planted and some social programs going on. Okay, that's one thing. And the second thing, um, is quite exciting. So we were at a recent trade show and one of the distributors we supply, Stober Performance Ingredients, they actually sell into the nutraceutical market. They had set up an advisory panel, a nutraceutical advisory panel. And as I was uh, speaking with Monica from Stober, it suddenly hit me. That's what Avena needs, not for nut nutraceuticals though, for sustainability. You know, this is about a community. We've got farmers, we've got commu commercial customers, we've got, um, you know, we've got civil societies, Field to Market Canada, we've got researchers. We're all here together, thinking together in the same room, which seems to be an unusual thing, right? In these days, there seems to be, um, it's not often that people come together and think together. So we, we um, are setting up a sustainability advisory panel for Avena Foods. It'll meet maybe twice a year, probably virtual, but it'll actually review what we're doing in terms of sustainability, what we're planning to do, and provide some rigor to what we're doing. And it also means that you've got both farmers and commercial companies, as well as um, 
field to market or whoever uh, in the same room. I just wanted to, I mean, the main thing is I wanted to thank everybody for coming today. I also wanted to thank our, some of the, the sponsors that we have uh, today for the, the sponsors of the, of the plot. So they're, they're all on the banner over here. Bob's Red Mill, Danone, Field to Market Canada, H2 Oats, I Want Organics, Oats Overnight, Old Dutch, Protein Industries Canada, uh, and Warburton's and the Southeast Research Farm. So thanks very much to our sponsors. That's great. Yeah.